Tech Mate, my movers and shakers. I'm Dave, this is MS Paints, and today I think we're going to try something a little bit different. Now, Gundam or Gunpla is something I hear very little about, you know, seldom talked about in the, the hobby circles that I walk around in. But the things I do hear are pretty crazy. Predominantly, it's about the engineering and craft that goes into making these kits. Of course, they are model kits in the, in the truest sense. However, these don't need any glue. And once they're completed, they are fully posable. Which, you know, when you look at a Warhammer Knight or one of the more prestige kits like that, you do get some minor articulation in guns or on tanks you get you know, turrets that rotate even though the turrets fall off when you turn them upside down whatever but no these things are fully posable in like the action figure holds its pose kind of sense which when you think about it a model kit that can be posed and holds its pose and some of these are like five quid are uh, the the engineering involved is actually quite frightening <laughs> I am somewhat intimidated by this thing. So not only is this my first Master Grade kit, whatever that means, this is my first Gundam kit in general. Uh, shit. And like with all new products, it is probably prudent to take a moment to see how all of this actually fucking works. Context-wise, I have no idea what any of this is. I assume we're painting one of the mainline ones. This was one that was recommended to me. This is like one of the main character Gundams. If a Gundam is a character, I think they are. So let's take a big old dive in. I'm going to put this together. I'm probably going to put a few more together. And then I'm going to paint them to see if they can be painted with the skill set and the understanding that I have. Now, to say that these Bandai kits are efficient and logical would be a complete understatement. God damn, these instructions are functional, literal, and to the letter. It becomes efficient to the point of seeing a letter in the manual and immediately knowing which sprue to reach for almost without looking. Also, I just built a cockpit that you'll barely be able to see in the final thing with the pilot inside. Fun! Another thing to note is the multicolored parts seem to exist almost entirely to add accent colors to pieces, never to be their own thing. Every stage in this build is a process of adding smaller component parts to construct a larger articulated chunk of the body. and every composite set piece is savoured. Only allowing you to realise each part's job towards the end of that segment's build. And speaking of each part having a job, can I just look at this stuff? Articulated joints that push other mechanisms connected to an external part that has multiple axes of movement. And after making some mistakes here and there, I have learned to go back, check what I've done, and always realize that it was me that had missed something. The Warhammer guy in me just wants to force a part in that doesn't fit. But nah, these kits are actually so flawless, there's no part you should ever need to force in. Get the right parts and it will always just click into place. So I have finished. Yeah, without swearing, he's cool as fuck. There's so many things that I think I'd done. And then it 
turn the page and then there's another sprue and it's like oh now cover all of this mechanism up all of this stuff that looks like it has i mean it has detail uh mostly on the gun for example and then you just put more stuff over the top of it and what you get is ludicrous detail on top of ludicrous detail and layering and depth it's just kind of a joke that this is a model kit even if it was an action figure it would be ridiculously over articulated so the next question is how do i paint this thing what's up guys tony d here can't do no perpetual full motion today as we got timbers everywhere and i don't want to trip over nothing and break my leg again timber and i'm here to talk to you about today's sponsor squarespace ever wanted to build a website but didn't want to learn no coding squarespace got you covered with a huge collection of theme templates it's easy to get started modify and publish your first website ever wanted to do a blog well squarespace has all that built in so you can make a hub page any story and organize the entries by date what not enough for you? You gotta be gun damn kidding me. Browser-based tools also incorporate a fully realized web store system that allows you to list items online, set quantity, prices, and shipping, and network with your existing brick and mortar EPOS system. If you fancy yourself a one month free trial and 10% off your first website subscription or domain, then head to squarespace.com forward slash MSPaints to get started today. All right, bye now. So I have some painting tricks that I want to try out and I don't just want to try them out on this big fuck off robo chunk that I spent hours building. So I need to build a load of other cheaper kits that I just so happen to have to test my theories out. If only I had a willing volunteer to help me build some more. Hi, I'm James. This is MS Paints. And this is my first Gundam build. So yeah, poor bastard number 4387 is James from the MS Paints Patreon who volunteered to get involved and help with the building of some Gundam kits. All joking aside, I wanted to get the opinion on what it's like to build one of these kits when you're not completely fucking preoccupied with trying to film the building of the kit. And while he was building of his own free will, I began to formulate an idea. I want to paint these kits because I like painting things. But with most of the plastic being coloured and the design is purposefully made to have that as a feature, I don't want to have to start from scratch because it's counterintuitive. And because this is MS Paints, we don't want to make work for ourselves. We know that acrylic paint won't directly apply to this plastic. So how do we prime these models whilst maintaining all of the colours that are already there? And I think I've got an idea. But let's see what James thought about the build. You just built your first Gundam. Entry grade gunpla, entry Gun, gunpla, entry. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was good. All of these different little sprues and stuff, uh -huh. are super impressive. Because yes. it's like this is this is a what? This is a is it six seven pound kit? Some eight something like that on these sprues. Yeah, that it's multicolored sprues like uh -huh. that. You you don't you know I've been building all like Games Workshop and like your Legion, the Star Wars yeah. ones, the yeah. Star Wars Legion ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah with your mold lines, mold lines on Star yeah, Wars yeah. Legion models, really fun. But yeah, just the engineering that goes into this is so much. Fun, such a fun yes. model to put together. Just yeah, yeah. some satisfying moments where little bits just, just that little. Yeah, yeah. This feels like it's designed kind of in the same way that Lego works, in mm. that it's that feeling about putting these pieces together yeah, yeah. and it's stable. And like for, a, I was a bit dubious about it being a push fit kit because yeah. when you hear that, it's like oh, I don't need glue at any point. Like, <laughs> this, this, I'm going to touch this, and it's just going to. Is this is this indomitus <laughs> push fit where it doesn't actually fit together? Exactly. Or is this fall apart and shits itself push fit? Exactly. And the answer is neither. Just having that ability to pose them as well is, I think, it's yeah, just, yeah. It's just super cool. Okay, I fancy him there today, and he yeah. just stays there. And this is something I built out of like 200 pieces, and. It stands up wherever I put it. I had it on one leg yesterday in a pirouette. It was know? good. And as we were talking about before, actually, there's so many different little triangles and little yeah, yeah. warning symbols and yeah. stuff, which on most model kits would be a sticker, let's face it. Yeah. But this is actually molded in. <laughs> this comes with stickers. I haven't put them on yet. Ah. It already <laughs> has enough going on for me. Um, <laughs> how has this been such a pleasant process? It's engineered that way. It is engineered that it way. It is engineered. Yeah. And we were having a conversation quite not just light conversation no. we, we were talking about like 
obscure anime stuff, drum and bass. Yeah. Really niche stuff. How does this work? How does that work? What do you think of the future of this? Yeah. All while just putting that together like it was a fucking sandwich. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. Cool. I'm glad you've had a nice time. You get to keep him. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you for having me here. No. Even if it was by gunpoint. I don't know how much of that is going to be usable. So yeah, our secret weapon is revealed. Maybe this isn't news to everyone else, but to me, I had a hard time finding any evidence online of anyone actually trying this. Matt Varnish is in fact, basically pigmentless primer. Yeah, it makes sense since we use matte varnish as an intermediate layer when preserving speed paints or pigment powders or enamels and things like that, so why wouldn't it work as a primer? Knowing full well that I will be using enamels and spirits, I primed with matte and then sealed with gloss before using these washes. Spirits and oils can cause some of the plastic to become brittle, so be aware to seal your model first and avoid getting that enamel crap in the joints. This weathering process is familiar to historical and grimdark modelers alike, using the MIG and AK Interactive enamel washes to grime and coat and tint and grunge up the model. Oil washes also work fine. And then we're going in with your choice of spirits to remove and almost reverse highlight areas as well as adding colour gradients. Because of their reactivatability, if that's a word, and long curing times, it's possible to go back to this process several times until you're happy with the blends and textures that you've made. Next, after sealing with a matte varnish, I'm going to add some highlights. Ooh. And because Gundam were designed to look cool as fuck and not to sell a paint line, this is going to be extremely simple. Three colours across both models, dry brushing, catching the raised areas where fading and wear and tear would naturally accumulate. Next trick is the old shitty sponge method. Dab it in some brown paint of your choice, then strike from different angles across edges and protruding surfaces. Finally, I have a straight edge brush dipped in a metallic of your choice, or my choice in this case, to highlight our most worn and exposed areas. I use the edge of the brush to catch the model's sharper lines and to bring out the raised areas that are a little bit too subtle to be noticed in the mold. Like these knee ridges, for example. And what a nice end result. For the time and effort put in, these models punch well above their weight. The simple act of being able to Clear primer model and then just accent what's already there makes the Gunpla hobby immediately more accessible to people like me. Let me know if you've ever tried Gunpla and what your thoughts on it are. Don't forget to like and subscribe on the way out because that does help me muchly. As always, huge love to my Patreon community for continuing to support myself, Hector and MS Paints. And thanks to Joe especially for waving these kits under my nose in the first place and now I can't stop building them. Cheers, I'm out of here.